Hey guys, just releasing Atlantic Salmon Fry here on the uh, headwaters of the Credit River in central Ontario, just north of Toronto. Um, I think we're releasing around 14,000 of them today. And uh, it's just been an incredible day to see these guys go off. As Lake Ontario's Atlantic salmon were driven to extirpation, local extinction, more than 100 years ago in 1898. The stocking event myself and my friend AJ Marie participated in released the 14,000 fingerlings in groups of about 100 at 50 meter intervals. Atlantic salmon are usually a saltwater species living in the Atlantic Ocean and spawning along rivers on the coastlines of Europe and North America. They're the largest of all the salmon species. They've been recorded up to 110 pounds. Unlike their Pacific cousins that spawn only once, returning to their home home stream and then dying, Atlantic salmon return to their home stream and spawn every single year and return back to the ocean, or in this case, back to the main body of Lake Ontario. Lake Ontario's Atlantic salmon were so unique because they were among the only Atlantic salmon in the world that lived full time in fresh water. They migrated to Lake Ontario after its formation during the end of the last ice age, 14,000 years ago. Lake Ontario had an ocean-like size and bounty of prey species, as well as suitable spawning rivers. First Nations peoples around Lake Ontario relied heavily on the enormous populations of Atlantic salmon, netting and spearing them. These incredible paintings done by Paul Kane in the early 1800s show Ojibwe fishermen spearing Atlantic salmon by torchlight out of birch bark canoes at the mouth of the Don River in Toronto Bay, which is now known as Toronto Harbor. Apparently there was even a prison riot in Toronto in the early 1800s from prisoners who were sick and tired of eating a 100% barreled Atlantic salmon diet. However, increased European immigration to the Great Lakes Basin in the 1800s had wide-ranging effects on the region's ecosystem, particularly on the streams containing vital spawning and nursery habitats for Atlantic salmon. Clear cutting for agriculture removed the forest cover necessary to keep streams cool and also greatly magnified the amount of soil eroding into the streams. Soil erosion combined with changes in water flow from dams, mills, and channelization resulted in the silting over of the rock bottom that Atlantic salmon deposit their eggs on and young Atlantics use as habitat. Dams and mills were also barriers to many spawning sites for returning adults. The dams were too high for salmon to get over, even though they are capable of leaping up to three meters. Unregulated commercial and sustenance fisheries also played a role in their decline. But by the early 2000s, the abandonment and rewilding of marginal farmland, as well as the conservation of areas along rivers for flood control reasons, had reduced the siltation of spawning beds and cooled temperatures in rivers, bringing significant amounts of Atlantic salmon habitat back online. And in 2006, the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters, in part partnership with the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources, decided to launch their Bring Back the Salmon campaign. They captured Atlantic salmon broodstock from Nova Scotia, Quebec, and Maine, and by 2019, the program has released 6 million Atlantic salmon fry and fingerlings, completed 198 habitat restoration projects along target rivers, including the planting of over 85,000 trees and shrubs, and removed many small dams and in-river barriers. Atlantic salmon are now naturally reproducing in select Lake Ontario tributaries. It's estimated that it will take another 10 to 15 years of intensive stocking and habitat restoration work before Lake Ontario Ontario's Atlantic salmon are a sustainably reproducing population. Want to help bring back the salmon? Consider becoming a member of the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters or volunteering through their website at bringbackthesalmon.ca. Atlantic salmon, baby, welcome back.